tuned in to the Community Cats Podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats Podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. Today, we're speaking with Steve Applebaum. With 40 years of dog training and pet industry experience, Steve Applebaum used his extensive knowledge and business acumen to create Animal Behavior College, the largest specialty school of its kind in North America. ABC offers pet industry certification courses in all 50 states and every Canadian province, and the ABC alumni group boasts the largest number of certified dog trainers in the United States. ABC combines a home study curriculum with hands-on externship training. Initially, the school only offered a dog trainer program. However, Applebaum also observed a critical and at the time untreated issue regarding cats in the United States. A staggering 860,000 cats are euthanized each year, many for untreated and often solvable and or preventable behavioral challenges. There was and is still a perception that cats can't be trained. As a professional animal trainer, Applebaum knew this was wrong and dedicated himself and his school to becoming part of a viable solution to reducing the numbers of cats abandoned and rehomed due to behavioral challenges by educating the public that cats are highly trainable. To accomplish this, ABC created a cat trainer program dedicated to teaching people to become professional cat trainers. Today, ABC offers five core programs in dog training, cat training, pet grooming, veterinary assisting, aquatics management, and zookeeper assisting. ABC has graduated and certified more than 24,300 students in the United States and Canada combined. Welcome, Steve, to the show. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So before we take a deep dive in all that information about training cats and everything, how did you become passionate about cats? <laughs> well, I've always, I've always loved kitties, but I became passionate about cat training as a dog trainer. What I found was is that uh, I don't know, 20, maybe 30% of my clients, dog training clients, had cats. And they had questions about very normal and I would later find treatable behavioral challenges. And so I would get these questions, you know, well, thanks for help with the dog, but my cat is scratching up the couch. What can I do? Or cat doesn't want to use a litter box. What can I do? Or how can I get the cat and the dog to get along together? And, you know, at first I was stymied because that wasn't my experience, wasn't my skill set. But I got these questions often enough. This is, this goes back, this is the eighties that I started asking other trainers, Hey, are, are you getting these questions? And many of them were. And so then the obvious next question is, well, what, what can we do about it? Are, you know, are these problems solvable? Am I crazy to think this? And some of the trainers at the time said, well, yes, <laughs> you are crazy to think this. Cats can't be trained. But that didn't make sense. I mean, it, I, anybody that's had cats recognizes that they're highly intelligent and absolutely capable of learning. I mean, you watch them every day. They can learn new things. And so it's really just a matter of not whether they were trainable, but how you would go about training them. Clearly, they weren't going to respond the same way dogs would. And you would look to train them for different things. And so that's that started me on my journey. And at the time, there was really not a lot of information out there. Some of this was trial and error. Some of it was connecting with trainers that had been looking at these questions and, and delving for answers for a few years longer than I had been. And uh, over a period of about 10 or 15 years, we came up with what we thought were viable solutions to common behavioral challenges and found that Many people were receptive to the idea of not only the cats were trainable, but the, the viable solutions that we could give to them. So it was really just an evolutionary process for me, but I loved it. And I found that a lot of the dog trainers that I connected with loved the idea as well, because dog trainers are animal lovers. And many of them had cats and loved cats. And they were thrilled at the idea that, wow, they could help kitties just the way they could help dogs and the people that love them. So it started from there, and then it sort of evolved over time. It's really funny. I've had my own sort of experience with regards to cat training recently. I 
have been born and raised a, a cat lover, and I sort of have always appreciated sort of the independent spirit of cats, and mm-hmm. they're not trainable and, and that kind of thing. And my niece recently adopted a kitty, Lily, and she's Lily Dot LeBaron on Instagram. If you want to check her out, because she's so my niece has always been a dog person. So she had lots of dogs in her life, and several of them were like therapy dogs. And she'd gone mm-hmm. to school to train them to be therapy dogs and that kind of thing. And so when she got this kitten, she f- just obviously felt, oh well, I can do the same things that I did in a certain way with the kitten that she could do with the dogs. So she's, you know, doing clicker training and the cat goes in the backpack and travels around and goes out on the kayak and actually swims in the lake with them and that kind of thing. And I mean, has her own little life preserver and it's, (laughs) it's really amazing, but you know, it was this mindset of like, when I was visiting my brother's house they were like, oh, we're all going to go outside. And I'm like, okay, we're going to leave the cat in the house. And they're like, no, she's coming with us. And I was like, wow, you know, that's not the attitude that I would have. But through the training that she's done with her, they're able to have her continue to be part of that family grouping, you know, outside of the house. And I would assume, do you think that helps with the behavior of the cat in the house? Sometimes, absolutely can. I mean, the, if you have the ability to get the cat out, and you can take Kitty on a variety of, you know, safe outings. You can get the cat more exercise. There's definitely a correlation between exercise and, and boredom behavior. So uh, not to mention the fact that it's just going to assist in the bond between the pet parent and Kitty. So, yes, 100% that will help. Now, it's not directly related to all behavioral challenges. I mean, litter box challenges might have nothing to do with that. but the more you can involve yourself and bring the cat into your into your life, if you will, the better off you're going to be. And I would love, I, are these pictures on Instagram? I will definitely check out. I want to see Kitty swimming. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, lily.lebaron is her Instagram handle with one O. And um, sort of a technical question, but it's one that intrigues me. What is the difference between, you know, enrichment versus training? I mean, I guess it depends on on how you use the terms. I mean, proper training can involve enrichment. So for example, if, if you have a cat that is, and, and, and you see this a lot with, with, uh, with kitty parents, you know, they'll have a dog and they'll have 15 toys. Okay. But the cat won't have any toys at all or very few. And they can't understand why when they leave for X number of hours a day, and that's a little less common now with COVID, but people still go out and about and cats and dogs are left to their own devices, they don't have anything to keep them occupied. They get bored, and they keep themselves occupied, sometimes with the cushions on your couch or, you know, with uh, your curtains, your drapes, whatever. So by enrichment, by giving a cat the opportunity to engage in interesting things in their environment when you're gone, you can help address boredom-related behavior. And that's true, by the way, with both dogs and cats. You give them different things to do, but it's the same basic principle. So, you know, I would would argue that enrichment really should be a part of a training regimen. You know, too often people, and I think this is part of where the disconnect occurs with cat training, is that people make an association, they hear the word training, and because it's more commonly associated with dogs, they immediately go to dog on a leash learning obedience cues, you know, walking, uh, healing, or loose leash walking, or sitting, or staying. And you can obviously teach cats to do that, but a lot of people think to themselves, yeah, but why Why would I bother? I don't really need that. Now, to your point earlier, it's potentially a really helpful thing to be able to have a cat that you can control in public because you can take the cat to, to more places safely. But for a lot of people, the thought of doing that with a cat just doesn't resonate. And so the idea of training doesn't resonate. But in reality, training isn't so much about teaching cues, obedience cues, as it is, at least the way we teach it, in addressing common but very treatable behavioral challenges. And for most people, when you say, when that say to you, well, cats can't be trained, you know, they're not praise oriented, they're too independent or whatever. If you ask them a series of questions like, okay, so if your cat can't be trained, what do you plan on doing with those litter boxes? (laughs) I mean, you're going to teach the cat to go to the litter box, right? Well, yes. Well, that's training. Just a matter of how you're going to do it. 
Okay, you've, you've got a cat tree in the, uh, a scratching post rather in the corner there. You want to train the cat to scratch on that and not your furniture, right? Well, yes, that's training. It's just a matter of how you go about it and avoiding some you know common pitfalls that can get you into problems. So uh, hopefully that answers the question. I would answer that enrichment and training are essentially two sides of the same coin. And you have a different definition of it? Oh, no, I tend to feel like the cat world falls on enrichment more heavily than training and feels like they've done enough for their cats just by providing them a few cat toys or, you know, providing them with a scratching post. But I do think that there is a component of training in there that we don't acknowledge, like training to the litter box. And in some cases, if you have an outdoor kitty, you know, training the cat to come home for wet food at night or something like that, or getting them into the barn, the barn cats. And there's a way to train your your outdoor cats to respond in certain ways so that you can help keep them safer at night, maybe, and that kind of thing. So let's embark on the cat training program that you have at your school. And what is that like? I mean, if somebody was interested in training their cat, what would you recommend? Well, if somebody is interested in training their personal cat, you don't necessarily need to come to take our program. Our program is for people that are interested in becoming cat trainers. Now, you can you could certainly take our program if you wanted to learn how to train your own cat, but you know, at, at $1500, you probably are going to be better off seeking the assistance of a cat trainer. Now, for people that are looking to make this either a part-time or a full-time career, or who want to learn these skills so that they can volunteer at a shelter or a rescue, then absolutely you should look to take a program like ours. So to those people that are interested in becoming cat trainers, yes, you know, by all means, do some research and you know, look at our school and see what we have to offer. For those people that are cat owners, cat parents, well, we certainly wouldn't turn you away if you wanted to take our program. We would be better off assisting you by pointing you in the direction of cat trainers, of which there are greater numbers now than ever before. And that's really our goal at Animal Behavior College. Two goals. One, to create a little bit more awareness, or actually a lot more awareness in the general public that cats are trainable. And two, to help create as many cat trainers or teach as many cat trainers as we possibly can so that when people go looking, they can find trainers that are using humane, effective methods to assist them in uh, you know, having wonderful relationships with their cats. Our program is an 11-stage course, and it's taught sequentially. So it's a combination of distance learning coupled with a, a hands-on portion. So for example, you wanted to take our program you would get stages in sequence. So you wouldn't get to stage two until you graduated stage one, stage three after stage two, and so on and so forth, until you got to stage nine, where we would place you at a, a, a rescue or a shelter, and you can, you can get some experience working there so that you can get some hands-on, and you can see firsthand some of what you've learned about in the program. It's very important to get a hands-on piece to this whole thing. And it uh, takes about 12 to 14, 15 months to get through the course. It's fairly extensive, but uh, it's, we think well worth it for people that really want to commit to making this a part of their lives and to making this a career. So I'm going to ask you a question on the flip side of things. So if I'm part of a, of a rescue or a shelter group and I, I don't necessarily have anybody specifically signed up for your program, is there a way to do a matchmaking with any of your students? Yes, yes. We've got a, a job boards for uh, both dog trainers and cat trainers that we will encourage any shelter or rescue, you know, to please post on or to look on. Uh, we've got tons of both on, on these boards at our website at animalbehaviorcollege.com so that if a shelter were looking to find a, a cat trainer, they could certainly connect with somebody most likely in their area. The coverage is not what we'd like it to be. That's going to take a little bit more time. I mean, you were reading the stats earlier about the dog trainers, and we've got tens of thousands of dog trainers in all 50 states. You know, cat trainers, I believe right now, we're at about, mm, I'm going to guess about 350 or, or so across the country. So it's a, you know, this is a relatively new program. We've been doing this now for about five or six years, and it's taken a little while. I mean, we've, we've taken it slowly, and uh, it's really a matter of perception. 
as more and more people realize that cats are trainable and this is a, a feasible way to make a living, more and more people get involved and there'll be more cat trainers out there. Your cat is your faithful companion, always there to give you comfort and love when you need it most. So why not give them the same comfort and love with CBD oil designed just for cats? Tamadori Collection is a family-run business based out of Greater Boston with a love and passion for cats. You can read more about their exciting new product, Tamadori CBD Oil for Cats, on their website at www.tamadoricollection.com. Tamadori CBD Oil for Cats is perfect for anxious cats who need relaxation support to promote calm, cats who suffer from health concerns to help boost immune health, older cats that have slowed down or suffer from joint discomfort who need to feel and move better, and young cats to support the longest, healthiest life. Ready to try Tamadori CBD oil for cats today? Enjoy $10 off your first bottle with code COMMUNITYCATS. So why wait? Try Tamadori Premium Cat CBD today for a happier, healthier cat tomorrow and for years to come. By now, you know how powerful the Dubert software platform is, facilitating everything from transport to fostering with just a few clicks. But did you know that the team at Dubert also provides consulting and custom software development for your organization's needs? The team at Dubert has extensive experience in website design, SEO strategies, mobile application development, and even advanced capabilities involving integration to social media and text messaging. Big or small, the team at Dubert can do it all. And because Dubert operates as a social enterprise, all of the revenue from their consulting services goes back into developing even more innovative and life-saving solutions for animal rescues around the world. So if you are planning to increase your digital presence online through a new website or some SEO strategies, or if your organization is looking for an experienced web development team to support your operations, look no further than the team at Dubert. Reach out to Chris today at chris at dubert.com and he'd be glad to discuss what you're trying to accomplish and how they can help. Community Cats Podcast is excited to announce a brand new event this year, the Online United Spay Alliance Conference. United Spay Alliance, or USA, is a nonprofit nationwide source for affordable, accessible, and timely spay neuter services, education, and policy. Together with USA, we will be bringing you amazing content on spay neuter work starting on Friday, February 26th, and running through Sunday, February 28th, 2021. Conference topics include recruiting veterinarians and meeting rural needs, a COVID-19 panel, how to start a spay-neuter clinic, including explanations of the various clinic models, transport models, how to make spay-neuter a priority in your community, grant-making for spay-neuter, how to work with animal control and your board of health, and many, many more. To see the full list of topics and speakers and to learn how you can register, visit communitycatspodcast.com. We're excited about this new offering and we hope you will be too. I want to take a little bit of time to focus in one of your other core areas, and that's the veterinary assistant program that you have, because we have a veterinary assistant as well as veterinarian shortage out there. I would say everybody in general is pretty clear to say everybody is overworked, overwhelmed, overstressed. And, you know, from participating in this program, does it help the vet techs be able to sort of survive better? Yes, I mean, it certainly does. I mean, the the vet techs will tell you that it's have decent veterinary assistants working with them makes their lives a whole lot easier. So, you know, our, our veterinary assistant program, and veterinary assistance is an interesting thing. That's our most popular program. We will probably wind up with about 2,200 students taking that course this year. You know, there's a lot of people that are interested in this. Uh, program works the same as, as, as the CAT program in that it's an 11-stage course, only when we get to what we call the externship, we will place you in a veterinary hospital or clinic. We've got about 3,000 of them that we work with across the country, where as a student, you will spend a minimum of 100 hours there just observing. You might be able to participate in some things, but it's mostly going to be an observational part for you so that you can see and get a real feel for what this is like. And of course, hopefully build a relationship with the hospital that may, we don't guarantee that, of course, but may result in you're being hired, or at least being able to network to being hired uh, once you once you graduate the program. There is, by the way, a connection between the CAT program and the veterinary assistant program in that one of the things that we are teaching 
our veterinary assistant students is that it is absolutely possible. And actually, I won't say easy, but it's definitely doable to teach cats to, if not love, certainly be okay with going into a carrier so that they can safely be transported to a veterinary hospital. In speaking with veterinary hospitals all over the country for years, we have heard that it's this is a real challenge that they have with cat with with cat parents, where it's they just don't get their cats to the vet with the same frequency as dog owners do. And the reason seems to be not because they don't love their cats, but because they're impossible to get into the carriers to transport them. And so you typically only take kitty to the vet if it's a dire emergency. And that's that's not a good thing. So we're working with our veterinary assistant students, as well as, of course, our cat training students, so that they all come away in, from this program with an understanding about how you can teach cats to learn to tolerate their crates, which we really think will help over time in lessening the number of cats that wind up going to the veterinarian much too late because people just weren't taking them there for routine examinations. So, but all of our programs work the same way, which is their distance learning combined with an externship. But we are finding that uh, quite a few veterinary assistant students are taking our cat training program, although by far the greatest number of people that take our cat training program are dog trainers who are interested in simply expanding their ability to help more animals. They love dogs. They love cats. They're thrilled about the idea that they can help both. And it, it increases their marketability as well. From just a business standpoint alone, it makes eminent sense to make yourself more marketable. There are a lot of dog trainers out there. There are not nearly as many cat trainers. And so when you first start your business, especially if you're looking to network and go to veterinarians or pet stores or various other places where you can hopefully gain their trust and gain referrals. When you walk in, you may be asked to stand on the end of a very long line because there have been a dozen trainers that walked in before you. But if you walk in with cat and dog training experience, you may be asked to stand on the end of a much shorter one, which means you can build your business faster. So there are a whole host of reasons why it's really good to look at this program if, you're, if you want to be in the animal industry. So I want to just take a quick step back and ask you a question with regards to the uh, getting the cat in the carrier in a stress-free or less stressful situation. One recommendation I've heard over time is actually, you know, we shouldn't be tucking our carriers in the closet, that we should have them kind of out and about and comfortable and encourage, you know, our kitties to go in and out. You know, is that part of that, like as a little tip for our listeners, is that a good idea? Yes, that is absolutely part of it. The thing to understand is, is that the cat was not born with a negative association to the carrier. That is a learned association. And, and think about it. I mean, if every time you went in a car or the vast majority of times you went in a car, you went to a place that you didn't like, chances are that when you were brought anywhere near a car, you would resist getting into one. People would react exactly the same way. So the first thing we have to do is we need to teach the cat to associate more positive things, or at least not negative things with the carrier. And that means getting them used to seeing it in a situation that doesn't involve them being stuffed into it, which shouldn't do anyway, and taken to the bad place, which by the way, isn't a shot at the veterinary community. We realize that you don't mean it to be the bad place. And most veterinarians are looking to create fear-free type environments. We completely embrace that. But regardless, some cats just don't like the experience and that is not likely to change. What can change those is they can learn to associate being okay with going in a carrier. So yes, carrier should be in the room pretty much if you want to get the cat used to it, just put it in the room all the time. Let them let them let it become part of the furniture so that when they see it, there's no negative association at all. Uh, you know, you can also uh, start to feed the cat in the carrier. And the way you do that, by the way, is simply leave the carrier door open and just put food in there. Now, initially when you do that, the cat's going to look at you, like most cats, because they're highly intelligent, are going to look at you with the, uh, you've got to be kidding. There's no way I'm going to fall for that. But there's nothing to fall for. I mean, just put some dry food in there and leave it open and don't worry about it. And it could take a day or three or five, but eventually Kitty will become curious enough. And I'm not, by the way, suggesting that that's the only place you feed the cat. I mean, you don't want to stress the cat out by forcing them to make that decision. 
you know, which is to either starve or go into a place that you're really not going to like. So no, this is simply extra food. Super special treat would be great. And uh, let the cat figure it out on his or her own. But you'll find if you're patient with it, that after a, a couple of days, a week, maybe two weeks on the outside, that when you put food in there, in the carrier, cat will have no problem going in there, sticking their head in there, eating the food. It's not a, not a problem at all. And that's those are just a couple of the steps you can take to starting to change the association the cat has to the carrier. It's a, it's a process. To do it correctly can take anywhere from two weeks to as much as two or three months. It really just depends. But it is completely worth it in the end because then you'll have a cat that you can transport safely to places without it becoming a huge ordeal. If folks are interested in finding out more about your program, how would they do that? Best way to do it is to just go on our website at uh, www.animalbehaviorcollege.com. You can also give us a call, although it seems like fewer and fewer people are actually doing that these days. But uh, if you wanted to call us, just call us at our 800-795-3294 number. But uh, most people that are interested in learning more, just go on our website. There's a ton of information about our CAT program, about all of our programs, and take it from there. And if you call, tell them that Steve Steve sent you. Sounds great. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today, Steve? The overriding message that I have committed myself to putting out there is, regardless of whether you become involved with Animal Behavior College or not, that's not the primary purpose of me doing these interviews. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly look for new business when we can find it, but our business is doing quite well. This is really about a message to all cat lovers and cat owners, which is cats are trainable. They are extremely trainable. They can be trained using positive methods. There is no reason why cats should be in shelters in the numbers that they are due to untreated behavior problems. To the shelter community people that are listening, please, please reach out to cat trainers to make this the same part of your procedure that many of you do with dogs. With dogs, the message used to be in the shelter community, spay and neuter, spay and neuter. And that's an important message. Whereas now it's become more of a spay, neuter, train, spay, neuter, train. That should be the same on the cat side. It really should. And I don't normally like to use the word should, but this is a should. It's so important that people understand that. They're trainable. They make wonderful pets and companions. And interestingly, their behaviors are often not any tougher to treat than dog behavior. And there are some surprising similarities. It can be a lot of fun, it can be very interesting, and it can be incredibly rewarding to build a relationship with a, a critter that, you know, God willing, you can have for 15, 20 years, you know, because kitties live, <laughs> I wish my dogs lived that long. Yeah, they can be with you a long time and they can be wonderful, well-adjusted members of the family if, if you learn just some basic techniques. And we'll, we'll help you with that. But that's the message I wanted to get out there. That's a great message. And I've had the, the privilege of having two kitties last 20 years with me. And it was wonderful having them for that length of time. And I wish all of the cats that I've had were able to live that long with me. But uh, I feel lucky to have at least had two last to, to 20. Steve, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for being a guest on my show. And I hope we'll have you on in the future. That's it for this week. Please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. We love to hear what you think, and a five-star review really helps others find the show. You can also join the conversation with listeners, cat caretakers, and me on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to hit follow or subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single show. Thanks for listening, and thank you for everything that you do to help create a safe and healthy world for cats. Wow.